Hello. Today I'm going to talk about um, <clears throat> a film that is uh, deemed a classic, you know, for all the right reasons. Um, yeah, I know sometimes that label gets put onto certain films, but, you know, looking back, you know, might not have actually aged well. Might have been a modern classic at the time, but the years aren't really kind to it. But this film is definitely a classic. It's inspired uh, many films for so many years since. It's its 60th anniversary uh, this year. And, uh, yeah, so much has been said about this film. I know I can't say anything new other than my own experience uh, with the film. So, with that, um, here I shall uh, discuss the film Psycho. Yes, I know I had the DVD out, but uh, I got this in 2008, uh, two years before uh, I got this. 50th anniversary, you know, for some reason it also has non-English on it, I believe French, looks like it at least, I don't know, I don't speak French, so if it's not French, I apologize, but, yeah, anyway, uh, you know, what can be said, performances are incredible, the writing and the Direction is fantastic. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think like a whole lot of people, I uh, I knew of the famous shower scene. Uh, I had seen it parodied many times. Uh, you know. Know the famous music, which is also incredible. But, yeah, uh, watching the movie, I, I <clears throat> you know, got so engrossed with what was going on with the story and the characters that when Marion Crane gets to the Bates Motel, meets, you know, Norman Bates, you know, all is well, but, you know, something's a bit off about Norman, which, you know, as the film goes on, we all know why, but <clears throat> early on, we don't really know. Not totally sure. But, <clears throat> you know, she goes in, uh, into her room and gets a... Um, gets ready to go to bed, but before that she decides to, you know, take a shower. And, and as she does this, uh, somebody comes into the, into the bathroom and stabs her uh, many times. Um, and, you know, in the full context of the film, it's truly in, in, incredible. It's, it's more effective than just watching it on its own. Um, I mean, on its own, it's really like, wow. Uh, this is really something. But, uh, you know, uh, just, just later, uh, watching it after just seeing it like in... There was something of like a hundred scariest movie moments, and this was one of them. Uh, can't recall exactly what number it was ranked at, but it was fairly high on the list. Uh, like in the, like I think in the top tens or so, I believe. But this was, you know, such an incredible scene. Just an incredible scene to watch. Um, isolated, and then later in the full context of the film. And the film itself is just fantastic from beginning to end. Uh, the performances are incredible. Um, surprised uh, 
Anthony Hopkins didn't get, or Anthony Hopkins, Anthony Perkins, uh, Anthony Perkins didn't get nominated for an Oscar for this film. Um, Janet Lee did, deservingly so. Alfred Hitchcock did, deservingly so. Um, but not Anthony Perkins. Um, maybe he did such a great job that you know, just might have, maybe that terrified Academy members. I don't know. Um, Kirk Douglas was also not nominated for Spartacus, which came out the same year. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would have thought he would have definitely been up for that uh, performance, but no. Um, but, yeah, this is uh, such an incredible film, very engaging from beginning to end, um, I think. And uh, you believe you know who you're following throughout the film until, you know, Marion Crane is killed, and then we're following Norman Bates, basically, and and that's a, a really iconic character, and Anthony Perkins brings it him to life, uh, and like no one else could. Um, I've never seen the Bates Motel uh, show, you know, the prequel to this, um, so I can't comment on. That show and the performance of uh, or who plays uh, Norman Bates on that show. I forget his name. I, I can see his face, but his, uh, his name will re come come to me later on. But yeah, I've heard good things about that show. Always wanted to see it, but never did. Never saw it from the first season or first episode or anything so because of that I just never got never watched it I believe it's done now so maybe I can find it somewhere streaming I don't know um, but yeah this film is so influential great film overall not just a horror film um, it's 60 years old I'm sure it's very effective for those who have never watched it before. I'm sure it can very, you know, really get people into the film. Affect them in such a way where you're like, wow. You know, even if people just know of the shower scene only, I'm sure watching the film will be really a better experience. You know, even more so than just... Just watching that alone, that scene alone, it's really great, it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I enjoy watching it, uh, particularly around this time of year. Um, I think it's fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. You know, I remember young, I was young, heard about this film, saw the famous shower scene, and uh, yeah. Remember in high school, uh, we actually watched this film and the remake back to back, or actually side by side. The remake was muted. Um, it was in a film class, and it just was not really good. It was not good at all. It wasn't a different adaptation of Psycho, where I'm sure they could have inserted certain things that perhaps were omitted um, from this film that maybe certain things would have been even more interesting if uh, if they were included but perhaps for the time the, the time it came out they did they purposely did not uh, you know include such uh, moments I've never read the book so I don't know just uh, how faithful this uh, film is to it but yeah, I definitely um, <clears throat> I definitely really um, uh, watching the films back back. Everybody was watching the black and white film. Everyone was watching Hitchcock's, watching Anthony Perkins. They weren't really acknowledging uh, the, the the remake 
it was a shot for shot remake too, which was which made it even worse. It's like it's bad enough you're remaking this film, uh, though because it's based off of a book, I'm sure you could do another adaptation. Which I'm sure if they did that, it probably would have been received uh, a lot better. But it just didn't work. It was just very bad, and the blood, the blood in the um, shower, like it looks like Kool Aid. And in this film, for the blood in the shower, it was like chocolate syrup, and it and it works because it's a black and white. You know, you can't see the red, and I believe that was one reason Hitchcock decided to shoot this in black and white was because you know. Looking at the blood with the shower and everything, it looked fake. The fake blood looked fake. And so you really couldn't uh, show the blood in, in such a way that was very believable uh, and would work. Here, um, though, in black and white, it definitely works. Um, yeah, this film is, is just iconic and it's a classic. And it, I know there are sequels, which I have seen the sequels. Um, it's been s quite some time, but you know, uh, they're not that bad. But at the same time, I'm like, you know, they're not really needed, but. You know, uh, this film really does stand on its own. You can just watch it on its own and never watch the sequels. But if you watch the sequels, it's not, they're not horrible. It's not like, you know, there's a passable s sequel here, and then the next two are very, like, blah. Which sort of happens with sequels. You might have one or two that are good, like, but the longer it goes on, the more stinkers you got. Here, it's, you have the masterpiece, and the sequels are alright. I guess you could argue as they might dip in quality with each one. But I remember thinking they're alright, they're fine. You know, nothing too incredible or fantastic, but, uh, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're okay. They don't, I don't believe they really harm the original, and that's what re re really sucks sometimes when a film that should never have a sequel gets a sequel, and the sequel or sequels inadvertently harm the original in some way. Like, it just, it just, it's just better if you just watch the original and never acknowledge the sequels. And the sequels are supposed to try to help build upon the original, and in some cases, they completely and utterly fail. I don't think the sequels really do that. Um, that's me. <clears throat> it's also been a while since I've watched the sequels, so... Maybe if I watch them sometime in the near future, I might change my mind. I might have a different attitude and might uh, rethink that. But going from memory, I don't think they were all that bad. I think they were pretty good. Um for sequels that didn't need to happen. Um, yeah. This, uh, this is a fantastic film. You know, Alfred Hitchcock truly lives up to the reputation he got as the master of suspense. He's, he, he made an excellent film. And the impact he uh, has with that has had it with this film is still uh, seen today. People are still inspired by this film, and uh, I think that's a testament to not just Hitchcock himself, but everybody involved with the film, all the actors, actresses, the composer Bernard Herrmann, um, <clears throat> the writer, and everybody. You know, this is just a fantastic film, beginning to end. And that's my thoughts on the film, um, you know, and my experience from first seeing it, uh, the clip uh, of the shower scene, and then finally seeing the entire film. 
and then even also watching the remake with Vince Vaughn. And Vince Vaughn was not all that great as Norman Bates, but I guess he could have been worse. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's all I have uh, uh, today. I hope you're all having a great day, a great week, and a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.